Today's topic is the secret formula to growing a successful fitness business. And I think this is a, a really important one, actually, because we know the attrition rate in the fitness industry is, well, the, the lifespan of an average trainer is about 18 months. So we wanted to help, you know, as many people as we can be successful in the uh, fitness industry and have long uh, and successful careers. And Andrew, I'm going to come to you first. You've got a little intriguing personal experience you want to share with us to start this one off today. I have. It was um, a, a gloomy Monday. It was, I think I put it was 2.47 uh, in the afternoon and I was feeling um, just, I had that blur. Uh, you know, I, was, uh, I wasn't my usual hive of positivity and the, the, the reality of, it, of the situation was um, I'd looked at my diary and there was a client coming in um, later on that afternoon who was that, how should I put it, that energy vampire. Uh, they, they were a great client in that they always attended their sessions, but each time they came, they would leave me feeling um, unenergized and just mentally uh, fatigued, even physically fatigued when they left which isn't great when you've got um, a client immediately after them and you've got to be on your game. So d did that lead to sort of a realisation that you needed to change and what, what was that change? Yeah, I had to take a good hard look at, at myself and uh, I came to the realisation that there was a particular core client base that I really enjoyed working with. And when I started diving into that, I, I could see commonalities between them. In later down the line, I realised that this was the process that we take clients through now. Uh, one of the first processes that we get people uh, to go down when they're mapping out uh, their marketing and planning their businesses. Who is your ideal client avatar? So in doing that, I was able to identify who that person was. Um, what their challenges were and that enabled me then to get clarity on the type of marketing and the message I needed to relay um, out to them that would resonate with them and lead them into um, a conversation uh, with me about coming on board as a potential new client. So yeah, it was identifying the new client. So step one of the secret formula is who is your ideal client? James, you want to share a little bit uh, from Strength Matters perspective, excuse me, about uh, client avatar, and why it's important? Yeah, like it's important because it's 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 a part of you and who you do it. You want to hang out with people that you you like and want to be a part of, and you want to help them, and and you can you have shared common interests. There's nothing worse than trying to help somebody who doesn't want to be there or is thinking completely different to you. It's just like a coming together of minds and it's just looking, asking for friction. You really are. You end up butting heads, don't you? Yeah, massively you end up butting heads. It's different values and you're not gonna help each other. You're gonna just frustrate each other. I'll, I'll give a couple of examples. You know, with people who come into us who want a certain thing for their website, for example, but they're not prepared to meet certain demands we have at the start. So I just know rather than trying to chase them, I just don't want them. I don't want them anywhere, anywhere near what we're doing because they're going to be, become problem children later, da later down the line. And that, if that makes sense. So, and the same with clients. Like if, if clients say, no, I'm not going to do this today. I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. They're problem clients because they don't buy into your values and who you are and what you're trying to do. So establishing who your client avatar is is the most important thing and the most important secret to growing your fitness business. And we've got countless examples of this, particularly with Joshua Hughes in the States. When we narrow down his avatar, we've got him to number one in Google, and he is literally, we've got his avatar to be helping busy, active parents. And there's images of parents, active parents, kids, him with his kids on his website. He is fully booked out. He is absolutely fully booked out, and he's got a waiting list now, which has never happened before. And he's always, there's that change that happened in a couple of months, because the right message, the right media, and the right people he's attracting is coming in, and they love it, because they want to work with him. And it comes down to that. What is your message? That's the thing, isn't it? You go onto his website and you, you can see exactly straight away who it is he works with and what he does. You know, no, no, no questions. So, you know, if you're not a busy parent of a certain age, you'll probably go on that website and go, hmm, maybe not for me. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what you want. And like we say with us, we want to work with 
health and fitness professionals who have a growth mindset. I think that's the really most important thing to come across with. So all our wording is, all we talk about experienced trainers, we talk about, you know, we do help with a few new people coming through, but that's okay. But they're the ones who have got this growth mindset and want to work and want to develop along with this. However, the people who have a closed, fearful mindset, we don't want to be anywhere near because they're the ones who are going to go by the wayside in 18 months because it's their mindset and their fear that's holding them back. So for us, client advertise everyone, we're going to attract the right people. And this is why we spend so much time with all of our clients before we build. A website building is easy, but the client avatar is the hardest part. That's the hardest part. Absolutely. So number one, identify your ideal client. So get working on that straight away. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to bring you back in. Number two, locating your ideal client. Do you want to talk us through that? Absolutely. Um, once you know who that person is and you've got a better picture of, of who they are, when, what newspapers they read, what hobbies and interests, pastimes that they might enjoy, then you'll start to build a bit bigger picture of where you can find them. And what I mean by that is where you can find them both online as well as offline, because at the end of the day, most of us are still local based businesses. So we work face to face with people um, on, on a day to day basis. So we can do a lot of our work online, which if you work with many marketing companies are pushing you into uh, running Facebook ads and the likes, but that might not be the best course of action. And it's certainly not the first course of action that we recommend. And if I think about when I came to the realization that my clients predominantly were lawyers, they weren't on Facebook. Uh, they were in LinkedIn and they attended various different um, uh, events, um, business groups. And of course, they were parents as well. So they would attend uh, schools, uh, school functions and the likes. So I knew partnering there and going to upmarket hair salons and massage parlors uh, were uh, massage bars and s salons and the likes. They would be, uh, <laughs> got to be careful here with the different types of massage parlors here. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, but but thinking about some of those clients, potentially they were at those massage parlors, um, who knows? But um, once I knew where to find them, I was able then to uh, approach uh, uh, local businesses who, who had the same client base and run joint ventures and do marketing through them where I could put, and I, I think of one example where I had um, a, I called it the magic brochure. It was a, it was a four-page document, um, a PDF uh, that I printed, that led with value as we always recommend. It had tips on um, how to lead your best life ever, and that was positioned in in these hair salons, um, spas, and the likes. And the, my target client base were picking them up, reading it, and then on the back was was an offer and that draw. Uh, drew in the, the client base that I was looking to attract uh, offline. Online, I realized with the lawyers, they would be on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn became my social uh, media platform a choice. So you know who they are. And the second point is where to find them. I think it's, Andrew, it's really important. You talk about like the Facebook advertising and stuff. And I see that with so many agencies. They're going after generic people. So they, they, these agencies have formulas and they have methods, and they go after the same types of people for everyone. It saves them effort, it saves them time. It doesn't mean they're right for your business, right? And this is why, this is why when people get those leads coming through, it's the wrong people coming through from these agencies, it's because they've targeted the wrong people. And that's the hard bit. So you've got to spend time to do this because it then emulates to everything. And you said it right, you know, if you're working with lawyers, most of them don't hang out on Facebook these days. They're so busy, particularly partners and senior partners, the guys who've got the money to, to spend with you. I'll give you another example. Cricket players, we're, we're with uh, Cricket Matters. Like there's people online who are doing things, but the guys we really want to work with are the ones who are trying to become a professional. And that comes from me networking and being embedded in that community and speaking and having conversations with them. And that's how we pull them in nine. The top end cricketers who we want to help get them to become a professional, they're not the ones you'll see us on Instagram and Facebook. It's by recommendation and referral only. And having that trust with you in, in, us in person. And that's really important to get that across is like, sometimes it's not all about social media marketing, but it's having that avatar and knowing where to get to them, whether it's on LinkedIn, social media in certain aspects, or whether it's from networking events or your social circles. 
Yeah, we kind of so that's um, as I say. So we've got uh, identifying your client, locating your client, but we kind of covered it a little bit there already. Baiting your ideal client, or I'd, I'd rather call it attracting your ideal client. We've mm-hmm. we've sort of covered it. Is it about having, as you say, socialising in the right places, having those connections, having a good quality uh, lead magnet, which is like the leaflet you talked about, Andrew? Absolutely, and yeah, I've I've. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, I've used bait in the past because I've always used the analogy of fishing uh, when it came to marketing. But these days, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think attraction is a much better uh, term of phrase. But you're correct. We've, we have covered some of it. But it's equally, it could be, again, once we know who they are, where to find them, then looking to attract them. Uh, could be running a workshop you know they're a great uh, way of delivering good quality value up front um, basing it on you know how to squat effectively or you know how to you know how to train with a kettlebell um, things off the top of my head would be uh, good but equally you know busy parents if there's a that they're struggling to think about what uh, they want good nutrition for the family, but they're unsure of how you know what meals. So if you could give them a nutrition plan and um, meal planner um, as a download, then that's a great starting point because now, no matter what you uh, offer uh, in terms of a lead magnet, they're now on your list, and you can build rapport, build that relationship, and build trust um, through uh, a, a welcome email sequence. So, uh, but essentially, as you say, uh, step three is is the, the attraction phase what you're going to use to to attract them uh, to take action yeah absolutely so once we've identified them located them attracted them it's all about then delivering a great results and experience right literally no matter how much marketing you do it literally is it comes down to the experience and what you offer them so you can you can attract them with all the bait and all the clickbait and everything in the world unless you deliver a great exceptional experience it's going to go by the wayside so if you want to really grow your business, you've got to have your systems, your deliverability and a good product to go with it because nothing beats a good product for word of mouth marketing. Totally agree. And uh, yeah, I totally agree on that. And um, I just wanted to add in, in my experience once by this stage, they'd had a strategy uh, call or strategy meeting where we were finding out if they were a good fit. Then that moved into consultation. We, we call it discovery session. But once they signed up, I wanted to wow them right out the gate. So they were getting a welcome pack. Uh, they were getting some follow up so they understood what to expect in their first session. When that first session came around, again, wanted to wow them. So they walked away uh, with the realization they'd made the right decision. But then equally, I was sending a little welcome card um, out to them in the post. So it was one of those little touches that that go a long way to uh, reinforce that, again, that they've they've made the right right decision. So it's the results and the overall experience uh, will uh, enable them to become long-term clients, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. It's all about uh, those little touches and and over-delivering. Those little, like, as you say, little welcome packs or as we give out a t- you know a mug or a t-shirt and sending them a card on the birthday just those little things makes people feel special and you know much more likely to stay with you obviously that is the secret formula to growing a successful business um and if you implement those tips hopefully you will indeed be very successful and have a long career in the fitness industry that is it for today please don't forget to rate review and subscribe and if you want to find out what's holding you back from growing your fitness business get yourself a free website audit by going to strengthmatters.com forward slash audit